It takes it a while for it to adjust. So what's up? I have the camera like looking, looking down. <laughs> it's it's looking up toward me like from the ground or something. Um, I'm laying in bed. I'm on the top bunk in my truck. Um, so I I was planning on making a video from my laptop showing the load board and stuff like that. Um, I will eventually do that. I did actually make a video, but, um, and I do have, I, I've adjusted the quality to make the videos a lot smaller in size so that I can actually upload them. But, um, the, uh, I, I just don't, I don't have an inverter in the truck right now. So I can't keep the laptop online long enough to upload the videos because they're like a hundred mega. 100 megabytes and uh, the Wi-Fi here is like 5 megabit upload or something it would take a long time to upload so um, I'll just uh, make these little little bitty um, videos on my phone um, and my phone I can keep my phone charged and online and let it upload and stuff um, so what's going on? Um, like I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, they've they've inspected my truck. They've put all the stickers on it, all the MC numbers. I've got license plates. I've got my toll passes. I've got my IFTA stickers. I've got my permit book with all my insurance and everything in there. Um, I have everything to go except. Um, my truck the only thing holding me back right now is they did not um, I don't I don't really know this how to describe it because I don't know what exactly happened like what's what they fucked up on <laughs> um, I cannot my truck doesn't show in the list of assets they have not properly like listed my truck as an asset within the company um so I can't do anything with hours of service. Now the the jacked up position this has put me into is that not only can I not like grab a load and go pick anything up right now, because this thing, the ELD is now monitoring everything the truck does, um, I can't move the truck right now without being able to assign the truck to me. Because it's if I were to drive down to the Petro right now, it's going to log those miles, but it doesn't really know what asset to log them against. As soon as I enter an asset in, then um, when, once I finally am able to attach the truck number, everything that I ever did is going to get assigned to me. And I'm going to have to go in there and like make a lot of modifications on the log so basically it would create a nightmare if I were to drive the truck around right now without being able to give you know attach myself to an asset um, because I would have to like do a whole bunch of manual entries in the logs I think because it's not gonna have a truck number listed in the logs to log against um, so Basically, I'm stuck at the terminal now, whereas prior to them putting the ELD in here, I was able to drive around freely without any issue. Uh, it was a personal vehicle at that point. Uh, but now I'm officially hired on with the company and I have an ELD in here and I can't move this fucking truck until until they, uh, they have it in the list. Now, the problem I'm having is it's at the end of the day now. They finally, finally finished everything up at the end of the day, like at four o'clock in the afternoon or something it was when I finally spoke with my new driver manager and they had me assigned to, you know, an operations manager and stuff like that. And my driver manager was like, hey, I shouldn't like she opened up by telling me that she should be off work right now. She was supposed to be off work like an hour ago. So basically it was telling me that 
she didn't want to stay on the phone for very long. <laughs> it's like, okay, nice to meet you too. Um, what am I supposed to do? And uh, so she was just like, make sure you can log into the device and um, then you're good to go. And I logged in and uh, she said, now you're probably not gonna be able to select your truck for about an hour because they just put it in the system. If you can't select it after an hour, then uh, message the backup driver managers. Um, just message driver managers. Any, any backup should be able to help you and they can uh, push it through in the system. So I waited an hour and I still couldn't select it. So I messaged the driver managers, no response. I waited another hour and I sent them another message, no response. A total of about three or four hours later, about three hours later, because it was 7 p.m. And uh, this all started at four. So at seven, I messaged him again. I said, is anybody getting these messages? I, and I explained what was going on again. And somebody finally replied to me, Darren, and says, yeah, I'm getting your messages, but I can't help you. Maybe you should try calling roadside or something. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> the, the after hours people are fucking worthless. Like you can't get shit done after hours and weekends. Um, so I called roadside again, after hours and weekends roadside. And the guy was just like, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> he just fucking hung up. Um, so then I sent a, a message back to the driver managers again saying, Hey, I called roadside and they said that they can't help. So I guess I'll just, uh, message my driver manager in the morning. And I said, because my driver manager said to message the backup driver managers, if it didn't show in the list in an hour and, uh, no response, like no fucks given. So yeah, I'm just going to sit here all fucking night, uh, till my driver manager comes online at six o'clock in the morning. And then I'm going to message her and tell her that nobody was able to help me and my truck is still not selectable. And uh, so I'm going to waste another fucking day sitting here. I could be driving to Springfield right now and I could be sitting in Springfield when they open up in the morning. But no, instead of that, I'm going to be sitting in fucking West Memphis, Arkansas at 6 a.m. It's probably going to take them two or three hours to fix this shit. And I'm not going to be able to make it to Springfield until they're closing. Like, I'm going to make it to Springfield at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon when that place is shutting down, and I'm going to have to set another fucking... I'm, I'm just... I'm getting really pissed off because time is money, and this is wasting a tremendous amount of my time because of all these people who just put no effort forth into their jobs, or they're just really bad at their jobs or a mixture of the two. I'm, I'm just really fucking frustrated. I'm really looking forward to the, you know, getting all this wrapped up, getting to the point where I'm not as reliant on other people. That's kind of why I wanted to do this whole thing is so that I can, you know, just pick my own loads and not have to sit around waiting on other people to do stuff. And, uh, you know, I just, I hate relying on other people because people are unreliable. I will say that the, um, you know, the daytime people, um, are pretty, pretty decent. It's just the after hours and weekends, like you can't get shit done at USA truck after like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, for, a, for an industry that operates 24 seven, that's kind of unacceptable. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous hindrance. So I was planning on deadheading, just driving to Springfield um, and being, you know, there at APU center when they open in the morning to get this APU shit fixed. And then I was going to, um, you know, find out how long, once I found out how long it's going to take them to fix it, then I was going to start looking for a load out of there. And, uh, I don't necessarily need to go straight to Oklahoma city from Springfield, but I was going to, um, try 
uh, to get to Oklahoma City as quickly as possible out of Springfield. Um, there are a lot of loads going into Tulsa out of Wisconsin. There are no loads going to Oklahoma City. I, well, I take that back. There was one. One single load that the destination was Oklahoma City. And it was Roanoke, Texas. Which is... Uh, I think it's north of Dallas. I can't remember. It was a very short run. If I was going to drive her down to Roanoke to pick the load up, I might as well just stop in Oklahoma City. It's like a 180-mile run. Um, so the only place to really uh, get loads in Oklahoma is uh, you know, delivering to Oklahoma, was delivering to Tulsa. There was some stuff going to Ardmore, but Ardmore is way in south. In um, It's like 100 miles south of Oklahoma City. Um, so I would have to drive past Oklahoma City south 100 miles and then backtrack up 100 miles. Uh, so I'd rather just go to Tulsa because Tulsa is 100 miles from Oklahoma City. But I'm not going to have to drive past Oklahoma City and then back. Um, I mean, there I, I've been looking to see, you know, what, what it's going to be like getting stuff to Oklahoma. And Oklahoma City... They don't have shit for freight in Oklahoma City. Nothing coming in, nothing going out. Uh, Tulsa, about all they have in Tulsa is Kimberly Clark. Um, that's that's about all they have in Tulsa. And then they occasionally, well, not occasionally, they have a like one load coming out of Muskogee. Um, they, in general, they just don't have a whole lot of stuff in Oklahoma, and almost everything in Oklahoma is um, the Kimberly Clark and Jinx. But uh, the rates, the rates are decent. They're pretty much the same as when I looked at them last year in 2019. So I don't know if they've climbed up from where they were. Um, like, I, I don't know if they were like really bad a month ago when, you know, and they've, they've just recently spiked back up. I, I don't really have context for what the rates have been doing, how they've been fluctuating throughout this whole virus thing. So I don't really know uh, how to, you know, what to speak on that. But the, the rates that I'm seeing currently are pretty much exactly the same as I saw back in 2019 when uh, I looked at the uh, uh, Just Jen TV when she did her YouTube videos on the load board. Um... Like, uh, I mean, the West Memphis is a decent little freight hub. It's not amazing, but it's decent. And, uh, there's a lot of loads that I could pull around here in the, uh, you know, dollar seventy, dollar eighty a mile range. Um, you know, there's stuff down around dollar fifty. And, and when I, when the rates that I'm talking about, um, some context on the rate, or <laughs> my ear, um, I'm talking about what I actually make, including fuel surcharge. So the, when I say a dollar 80 a mile, I mean, that's not what USA trucks getting paid. And then I'm taking, you know, a, a small piece of that. I mean, the actual rate is probably like two dollars and forty cents a mile or something like that, because the dollar eighty or whatever a mile that is after USA Truck takes their thirty five percent cut, and then I add in one hundred percent of the fuel surcharge. So uh, the rate I'm talking about is what I actually make per mile on the rate plus the fuel surcharge. Um, there was stuff. Uh, I looked up in uh, the Ohio area and there were loads up there that I could pull that were like oh, 220, 230 a mile um, and that's pretty much what I saw a couple of years ago uh, based off what I saw a couple of years ago I could 
average dollar seventy a mile if I stayed in good freight lanes, and I think I can still do that. Now, what I will say is the number of loads are a bit on the on the low side. Like the loads that are there are paying decent, but there's not many of them. To give you an example of how bad it is, when I was looking at loads yesterday to come out of here, out of West Memphis, um, and I was looking at loads to leave out today, um, I don't know how many loads exactly there were, but I would say there were 20 to 30 loads that I was looking at. Um, now I wasn't sorting them by, you know, the dates and stuff. I was just looking at like every load in West Memphis. Uh, but there were quite a few loads, but some of them weren't picking up until Friday. Um, this morning I was looking specifically at loads that left today, loads that I could pick up today, um, or tomorrow up until like a certain time noon or something like that. And there were like 12 loads this morning. And I was really interested in one that was going to Topeka, Kansas. Because, uh, well, it wasn't technically Topeka. I think it was Ottawa, Kansas. The pay was decent on it. Um, but mainly what I was the reason I was interested is because it goes straight through Springfield. And it had an extra day on it. So I'd be able to go pick up the load. Uh, it was from a Walmart DC to a Walmart DC. I would be able to go pick up the load, drop and hook, and then s stay a day in Springfield, get my APU fixed and the inverter installed, and then um, drive on to Ottawa, Kansas, um, which is only a couple hours away from Springfield. Um, I think maybe three hours away, if that. I can't remember. The whole load itself was like... Uh, around 400 to 500 miles and I was going to knock out 200 something miles getting to Springfield so I guess it'd probably be about 4 or 5 hours left um, but it would, that, that load was perfect but I couldn't pick I couldn't pick a load yet uh, Christina told me not to actually request a load until um, I was assigned to my operations manager she said that if I did uh, pull a load before I was assigned to an operations manager that it would go into some kind of limbo state and it would just kind of get stuck um, my driver manager told me when I talked to her at 4 o'clock this afternoon that I, I could pull a load right now if I want but I, I the problem is if I pull a load right now I don't know when I'm going to be able to move this truck I don't know when they're going to be able to fix this asset situation with my hours of service like I cannot run my hours of service clock right now. I can't move the truck until I can assign the asset to it. Because on your on your logbook, like if you did paper logs, on your logbook, you have to put the asset number that you are um, driving. Like uh, if you don't have like a truck number, you have to put your license plate number. You have to put something. And on these ELDs, every time it makes an entry it logs the asset that you're assigned to. So if I drive around with an, without an asset, then it's going to have all of these entries with no asset attached to it. And um, if I get inspected by TOT, it's going to be an hours of service violation because that's a requirement on your logs is to have that asset in there. I don't know what all else it will screw up, but it'll just be an absolute nightmare. Uh, I don't want to deal with correcting all of those logs. Um, well, I, I digressed off into a, a logbook conversation there and forgot what I was talking about. Oh, that Topeka, Kansas, or uh, the Ottawa, Kansas load. Really wanted that. I couldn't pull it earlier today when I saw it. By the time they finished my truck and, well, okay, so that was at like 8 or 9 a.m. There were like 12 loads. And I really wanted that Ottawa load. By noon, um, there were four loads. And then I checked it like 30 minutes later, and there were only two loads. <laughs> so, like, 
Um, I think there's only, well, there was one new load that popped back in there uh, later in the day, but I think there's only like three loads that are available to be picked up today. Uh, last I checked at around four o'clock in the afternoon. I've given up on uh, researching loads because I, I have no idea when this truck is going to be ready to roll. And I, I'm not going to pull a load until, like, I can, you know, go somewhere. One thing I think I'm going to have to do, though, is I'm going to have to uh, grab loads several days in advance. I'm going to have to pre-plan my loads because um, these loads, when it comes to the day to pick them up, you can't find shit. Like, there are loads on the load board that don't pick up for two or three days. So, um, if I was planning out my route to go somewhere, then I could be, you know, snagging up pre-plans a couple of days in advance. And I would have some pretty decent loads right now. But trying to get a load the day of is um, no bueno. Like, right now, trying to get something to pick up to go right now is, is not good at all. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm just, I'm hungry and I've eaten all the chips and snack food that I've had in the truck. So I can't really go anywhere. Um, you can't get Ubers in West Memphis, Arkansas. Um, So I don't really know, like, I, I'm just going to, I guess I'm going to watch some Netflix on my phone for the next five hours or so, and then go to sleep and wake up at 6 a.m. and start messaging and calling people to try to get this shit resolved so that I can hopefully get the hell out of here. This whole fucking week is shot. Uh, I was really hoping that I would be, because uh, the APU thing, the APU and the inverter, that's the all day thing. So for me to get to Springfield tomorrow, by like I said, by the time I get to Springfield, the APU place is probably going to be closing for the day. So I'm going to have to set all night in Springfield, and then. Um, I'm going to have to spend all day Thursday there getting everything fixed. And then I'm basically going to leave out on Thursday and try to get to Oklahoma City for the weekend. And I might end up deadheading to Oklahoma City from Springfield, which is a long deadhead. Like, it's it's like 200 miles from uh, West Memphis to Springfield, 200 to 250 miles. And uh, I think it's 220 miles or something like that. And I'm going to have to dead to head that. There, there are no loads to get me there. And then from Springfield to Oklahoma City or Springfield to Tulsa, no loads. Um, so I'm going to probably have to dead head uh, from Springfield, which is going to be probably another couple hundred miles. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a tremendous amount of dead heading. I doubt that I'm going to get any, any money this week. I'm going to be in the hole this week. <laughs> um... I don't know, but I need to, like, it really sucks that West Memphis is the closest fucking terminal to my house, and it's 500 miles away. Um, one of the reasons I chose USA Truck is because they had a terminal fairly close to my house. The Van Buren terminal was uh, 200 miles away from my house, uh, which is decently close. It's not incredibly close, but it's it's not too terribly far away. But they shut that terminal down within the first month I was hired. And, uh, well, approximately a month after I was hired. Almost exactly a month after I was hired. So that really sucked. Um, and the terminal they're opening up to replace it, um, I'm not sure if it's roughly the same distance. It's Waxahachie, Texas. So I think it's probably about the same distance away from me, but it's through Dallas. I'd have to drive through Dallas to get to it. But anyway, that's my update. I'm just going to be sitting for the fucking night, doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, 
waiting on other people. And hopefully at some point, um, as an owner-operator, I'm not going to be as reliant on others as I am right now. But uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Um, uh, think I'm going to walk over to the building. Let me see if... I don't know what you're going to be able to see. But uh, I think I'm going to walk over to the building and use the bathroom. That way I don't wake up a couple hours from now having to use the bathroom. That that That's one of the things that really sucks as a truck driver is when you're at home and you wake up in the middle of the night, you need to go pee. You just hop out of bed, walk 20 feet over to the bathroom and use the bathroom, crawl back into bed, go back to sleep. As a truck driver, I have to get dressed, crawl down out of the bunk, crawl down out of the truck, walk a couple hundred yards <laughs> to the nearest restroom, and uh, then use the restroom and then come back, get undressed, and try to go back to sleep. Um, it's really hard to get back to sleep after you, you know, get up, get fully dressed, and then, you know, go somewhere and then come back. Because you fully wake up in that uh, brief amount of time. Well, it's not a brief amount of time. It's like 15 fucking minutes <laughs> to, you know, to, to walk over and use the restroom somewhere. Um, so I'm going to try. I always try to use the restroom right before I go to bed to uh, limit the amount of times I wake up in the middle of the night and have to go use the restroom. But, uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm about to go do. I might take my laptop in there and uh, play on my laptop and charge it up. I don't really feel like sitting in there in the uh, the driver lounge area, though. Um, I just really uh, I don't want to. I don't really want to hang out in there. Um, it's not a very private area. Um, but. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.